स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so what we'll talk about today is what's called the universal property of a free group so what do we have we have a set s and given the set s we have constructed something called the free group on this set s or generated by this set s now uh, between these two objects the set and the free group generated by that set there in fact is a certain natural map okay so what map is this so we'll give this map a name i'll call it j what does this map do take any alphabet take any element x of the set s so for example for the free group on two generators we had called them a and b so x is say a or b in that case so more generally x can be any element of the set s now uh, how do we associate to this an element of the free group so we do the following we first think of so maybe it's best to think of this in the following way uh, let's map s to the set of all words in s hat the augmented alphabet uh, what map is this well the element x first is going to map to the word x so think of this as just the word x uh, it's got length 1 now from the set of words in s hat to the free group i have the following obvious map given any word i can associate to it the equivalence class corresponding to that word okay so uh, the the net result is that this map j that i have talked about is the following it sends x to the uh, the equivalence class of just the singleton word x okay so that's sort of a natural map so for for instance if we take the uh, free group on two generators that we we talked about so so this is let's illustrate this if s is a b i have the free group on two generators this natural map just as the following it takes a and maps it to the equivalence class of a b to the equivalence class of b okay so map to the free group now observe that uh, s is just a set f of s is a group but uh, from a set to a group you have a function you really can't talk about other extra properties that the function can have right for example if you have a map between two groups as we have seen before we can talk about homomorphisms of groups uh, but in this case one of them is just a set so it's just a, a, a map of sets or in other words it's just a function okay so this is a function so just a map and uh, uh, what's the image of this map so what's the range of this function if you wish so let me call this the range of this function f well what is this by definition this is just the set of all equivalence classes of the singletons x as x ranges over s okay so this is some subset of the free group and here's the first uh, important observation that this subset range of s so here's the let's call this a proposition so here's a proposition this particular subset the range of this function range of this function j in fact it's a subset of the free group which generates the free group okay in other words if you recall we had this notation which said given any subset this case the range of j the subgroup generated by that subset which means the intersection of all subgroups of fs which contain that subset uh, that subgroup the subgroup generated by this is in fact the whole group that's what we mean by saying it generates this okay so the proof well rather easy uh, there are some obvious elements which belong to the range for example by definition this belongs to the range and hence to the subgroup generated by the range 
Now, whenever an element, in this case x uh, singleton belongs to a subgroup, the inverse of that element, so this means that the inverse of x also belongs to that subgroup. Okay, but observe the inverse of x as we have already seen is nothing but the equivalence class of the word x prime. Okay. So, what does this mean? This means that x prime also belongs to the range of j. Okay. So, we have identified two very important classes of elements. One is uh, x itself, the other is x prime. So, all of these guys belong to the range of j. Okay. And this is true for every x in the alphabet S. So, in particular, if your alphabet only had two elements a and b, what we are saying is that the a, b as well as a prime, b prime, all four of these belong to the subgroup generated by the range of this function. Okay. Now, uh, that is more or less all we need as soon as you have these four types of elements, I mean we have these two types of elements x and x prime, this automatically means that everything else belongs. Okay. So, what are all the other uh, what is a typical element of FFS uh, going to look like? Well, it is going to look like the following. You take a word, take w to be a word in the augmented alphabet. Then the typical element, so look at the equivalence class of w. This is an element of the free group. So, every element of the free group is of this form, the equivalence class of some word. I claim that this equivalence class of w also belongs to the subgroup generated by <coughs> sorry that that is going to be edited out. So, let me start again from the claim. So, the claim is that the equivalence class of w belongs to the image of or the range of this function, the subgroup generated by the range. Okay. And why is this? What does a typical word look like? So, this is a proof of the claim. So, imagine what does a word look like? So, let me just describe the basic idea and leave the formal writing out of this argument to you. Uh, so, for example, uh, if we were in the, the free group on two generators case, here is the, so here is an example. Uh, say maybe this is a typical word, maybe the word looks like this. Okay. So, if this is what your word looks like, then observe the equivalence class of w is by definition. So, w itself is a concatenation of all the singletons, right? w can be thought of as the singleton a, that is a word concatenated with the word, the singleton b concatenated with this word, with the next one with a, with b, with b and a prime. Okay. So, when you look at the definition of the product in the free group, it is just this multiplied by dot 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 all the way till the last alphabet which is a prime. Okay. So, the equivalence class of w is nothing but the product of equivalence classes of singletons just words of length 1 and each singleton is of the form either a or a prime or b or b prime. Right. So, more generally if you would write this proof out for the case of an arbitrary set s each w would be written as a product, a similar product in which each alphabet which occurs, each letter which occurs is either an element x of the alphabet or of the form x prime for some x in the alphabet, okay, just like what we see here. So, what does that mean? But now observe each of these guys, we have just proved that A belongs to, right. So, we have just shown that A is an element of the image of J or the range of J. Uh, B, the singleton belongs to the range, A prime belongs to the range, B prime if it occurs belongs to the range and so on. Right? So, in this case we have shown that each one of the singletons is an element of the subgroup generated by the range. And so, if each element is in the subgroup, the product is of course in the subgroup. Okay? So, this means that because it is a product, it belongs to the subgroup generated by the range of J. Okay. So, the key idea here is really the first step. So, this is this is more or less it. 
once you show that the singletons are there in the subgroup generated by the range, then every word is automatically there because a word is really a product of singletons. Okay. So, what does that mean? That means that finally we have shown that uh, W belongs to the subgroup generated by the range of J and so that means every element of the free group itself is contained in the range uh, but of course the subgroup sorry the subgroup generated by the range but the reverse inequality is of course true the subgroup generated by the range is always I mean after all by definition it is a subgroup of the free group. So, this is obvious and so we have inequalities or rather uh, the subset sign going both ways which means these two are actually equal. So, the free group is equal to the, the subgroup generated by the range of this special map J. Okay. And in some sense this is the sense in which this you, you, we say that the free group is the group generated by uh, the set S. We identify the set S in some sense with the range of this, this map J. Okay. Now, uh, let us go on to the, the, the universal property itself. So, this is sort of the first step in some sense. Now, let us move on to the universal property. So, call this. Okay. Now, uh, let us formulate this in the form of a proposition. So, it says let k be any, any group and f from the original set s to k be any function just a map of sets. Okay. So, just given this data then there exists a unique. So, there are two, two parts to this there exists and unique. So, existence and uniqueness uh, group homomorphism f tilde. Now, this should be a map between groups. So, we say it should be a map from f s to k such that the following holds such that f tilde composition composed with the map j should give me the original map f. Okay. So, this is the uh, this is the statement of the universal property of the free group. So, let us just try and understand this what it says uh, a little bit more. Okay. For this it is easiest if we just draw a diagram. So, uh, recall what is given is your set S a group G uh, a group K and a function between them F. Now, J as we saw earlier is uh, a certain distinguished map from the set to the free group generated by the set. Now, what is being asserted here is that there exists a group homomorphism. So, F and J are not group homomorphisms they are just maps of sets, but the claim is that there is a group homomorphism. Okay, so, the existence of this map which we will call f tilde is the content of the proposition. So, there is a group homomorphism okay, and further it is unique. So, there is also an additional uh, thing of uniqueness such that this what we usually express as such that this diagram commutes. So, if you see what this uh, identity says it is f tilde composition j is f which means that if you sort of go from S downwards and then like this. So, that is your F tilde composition J or you just go straight to K that is your F okay? such that whether you go down like this or straight like this you get the same answer and this is what we usually express by saying such that the diagram commutes okay? which diagram the one that I have just drawn. Okay. So, the, the key assertion here is the existence and uniqueness of a group homomorphism which makes this diagram commute. Okay. So, uh, let us try and prove this the proof itself is rather easy in some sense everything 
about uh, about the proof is already forced it's all determined so we just have to um, follow what's required to be satisfied by the function f tilde so let's uh, let's start here so maybe for concreteness let me illustrate the proof again for the case so let me just say for concreteness um, i will illustrate the proof for for the free group on two generators but you should be able to extend it without any difficulty to arbitrary free groups so what is it that we need we need from the set s uh, to k you are given a map f i have to construct a map like this right so this is this is the thing that i still don't know this is the original map chain okay so let me see what properties my my f tilde uh, has to satisfy this this map f tilde so observe that f tilde on j of x so so here i i just have s is a and b so let's just see what this does to a and b first so observe this is equal to f of a similarly f tilde of j of b is supposed to be the same as f of b okay so this is just by the definition i mean this is the requirement f tilde composition j should be f now what does this mean f tilde of j of a is by definition f tilde of the equivalence class of a okay f tilde of j of b again by definition is f tilde on the equivalence class of b okay so what is it that i have to start with i already know what values f tilde must take on the range of j okay i know what value it takes on the the singleton equivalence class of a i know what value it takes on the equivalence class of b okay so f tilde is partially determined it's determined it's given to me on the range of this function j that's more or less what it said okay but that's really enough because if you remember what we just did the range of j generates the free group right it it it's it's a generating set for the free group so if i know my homomorphism f tilde on this generating set i can deduce its values on all the elements of my free group okay and we will do it in just a second so this is what i'm i i i know i must have so for now just treat all this as sort of heuristics we are trying to see what all information we can deduce about f tilde now uh so let's do the next thing what's f tilde what do you think f tilde should be on uh let's say a prime well again as before so this is almost like the calculation we just did so recall a prime is nothing but a inverse by definition and a homomorphism since f tilde is a homomorphism if i know the value on a then the value on a inverse is just the inverse of that value but now again f tilde of a i already know what it is it is f of a and so this should be f of a inverse okay so what this means is i also know the value of f tilde on a prime similarly by the same logic i know the value of f tilde on b prime it is nothing but f b inverse okay so what we have done is we have managed to find four pieces of information about f tilde its value on a its value on b its value on a prime its value on b prime okay and now recall that any word you know i'm trying to find out how to define f tilde on all of f of s okay but any word in f of s is well it's a word so i mean it's the equivalence class of a word it can be written as a product of a b a prime and b prime okay so that will tell me how to define f tilde on any word so again let's do it do this by example for concreteness if i take the word w which looks like a b a prime b prime a a for example a b prime okay if this is my w then observe how will i i so i'm going to ask the following question what should what value should f tilde take on the equivalence class of w well just like the computation we did the value should be f tilde of i first write w as a concatenation of singletons so i think of w as being a 
into b into a prime etc etc okay and now i use the fact that f tilde must be a homomorphism so if it's a homomorphism what does that mean it says that uh, this is f tilde of so let's maybe just do it on this page so this should look like this should look like f tilde of a f tilde of b this is just the homomorphism property f tilde of a prime etc okay but then each of those we know we know the answers to those right so for example this is just uh, let's do this so the answer is going to be f tilde of a is f of a f tilde of b is f of b f tilde of a prime is f of a inverse f tilde of b prime f of b inverse uh, next was a f of a let's go back up and check so this was a b a prime b prime a a and b prime so the last guy is a b prime so this is f b inverse okay so you can sort of see how i deduce the value that f tilde should take on this word and this this final answer here f tilde on my word w so this sort of tells us how we should define this this map f tilde now in general okay so now now that we sort of have an intuitive idea of how f tilde should be acting let's just go back and use this as our definition of f tilde okay so this this last thing here is going to be uh, going to become uh, our definition in some sense so now we go back and define f tilde so formally so define f tilde formally as follows from the free group to k as follows uh, take any element w well take any word w if you wish this hat now write this as a product of a's b's a primes and b primes uh, a b a a etc that's what w is going to look like in general now uh, the definition so then define f tilde on the equivalence class of w using the following prescription so let me just describe it you scan so here's the procedure you scan w from left to right so step one scan w from left to right every time you see an a so what will you see when you scan it you will see either an a or a b or an a prime or a b prime whenever you see an a you replace a by f of a so you'll notice that's what we have done here right all the a's have become f a's replace uh, b by f b and if you see an a prime you have to replace it by f of a inverse okay observe f of a is an element of k so f of a inverse of course makes sense it's also an element of the group k and similarly you replace any occurrence of b prime by f of b inverse again an element of k okay now replace these and take the product in the same order left to right so take the product of those elements so take product in the same order so notice k may not be an abelian group so i can't change the order of my factors if i see an a before a b then when i apply my f tilde it should be f of a times f b can't be f b times f a okay so here's the prescription here's my definition of of f tilde okay now having defined it in this way it's just a question of checking the various properties so that's the the main definition so uh, let's check the the key properties check properties okay so what all will we have to check firstly there is uh, well definedness okay we have to check well definedness because remember we have defined f tilde on the equivalence class of a word w so well definedness just means the following i need to check the following that if two words w1 and w2 are equivalent to each other in other words if 
uh, one, one of them can be obtained from the other by a sequence of rewriting rules. Then my f tilde, the value on w1 will give me the same answer as if I compute it on using w2 as my representative. Okay, And so let me just sketch the proof. Again, I will leave this as uh, the formal writing as an exercise to you. So observe if w1 and w2 are just directly related by a basic rewriting rule. Suppose this is a basic rewriting rule, which means I can get w2 from w1 in one step by just either inserting an a prime or uh, a prime a or deleting an a prime or a prime a or b b prime and so on. If you can do that in one step, then this is this is clear. Okay, then it's clear that they both must have the same f tilde. Okay, then uh, it is clear that this equation. So let's call this equation star. It's clear that this equation star holds. Why is that? Because what what does w1 look like? It's a product of a's, b's, a primes, and b primes in some order, right? And let me assume that. Uh, I obtained uh, w2 from w1 by let us say inserting uh, a pair a a prime somewhere. Okay? So, let us assume this was w1 and let us assume w2 was the same thing as w1 except somewhere here in the middle I inserted an additional a a prime. Okay? The rest is the same. Now, suppose this is how I got w2 from w1. It is now got length 2 more, but now if you if you see what our prescription was how did we compute f tilde of w2 the definition is you just apply you know you look at each of these dots from left to right if it's an a you replace it with f a if it's a prime you replace it by with f a inverse likewise for b okay so you'll you'll keep scanning it from left to right it will become either f of something or f of something inverse dot 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 and now uh, so far it will be the same whether you do it on w2 or on w1 thus far both are going to give you the same answer the only difference can arise when you see the a a prime in w2 now for that uh, what's the prescription say when i see an a i'm supposed to replace it with an fa when i see an a prime i'm supposed to replace it with an fa inverse okay so these are the two extra terms that i get in w2 and again, the rest of the terms to the right of that are the same in both w1 and w2. So, this part agrees. Okay, so, these terms are the same as those in w1. Similarly, these terms are also the same as in w1. The extra is only in the middle. But observe the extra is just the product fa times its inverse. So, of course, that is just the identity element of k. So, this is nothing but the identity element in k. And so, this product is just going to give you the same terms that you had in uh, in w1 times identity times the same terms that you had in w1. So, the net result is of course, the same answer as what you would have gotten for w1. Okay, And of course, this is the proof for a single basic uh, rewriting rule. But if it is true when you apply a single rule, then of course, it is true even if it is a chain of rules, if you can go from w1 to w2 by a sequence of steps, at each basic step this fact holds that f tilde gives the same answer. So, of course, even if you have many steps, the first beginning and the end of the, the step, uh, they will still have the same uh, values of f tilde. Okay? So, this is the well definedness. Now, uh, the other properties are also very easy. So, if you show uh, what do we need to show? We need to show that f tilde composition j is f, that is the important one. But that is obvious because of the way, I mean, in fact, that was really how we, we uh, figured out what um, f tilde should look like. So, observe this just means the following I should show that I need to prove this that f tilde of j a is f a and f tilde of j b is f b. Okay. But this is true because f tilde of j a observe is nothing but f tilde of a, j of a is just this a by definition. right? 
and f tilde of a is of course equal to f a. So, this equals f a by definition and the same holds for f b. Okay. So, similarly for f b. Okay, so, that is this property. Now, of course, the other important ones are to show it is a homomorphism. Okay, so, this one is uh, just question of figuring out how this works under concatenation. So, I am going to leave this to you as an exercise. Show that if I take two words w1 and w2 and try to compute f tilde on their product, then it will just give me f tilde of the first guy times f tilde of the second one. Okay. So, again an easy exercise from the definition and finally, what we need to show. So, with this we are really done with, with the existence of f tilde. Right? We have shown it is a homomorphism, it is well defined, it satisfies the, the diagram commutes property. Now, what we need to do is really to show uniqueness. Okay, that there exists a unique f tilde which satisfies uh, which makes a diagram commute which is a group homomorphism. Now, again uniqueness I am I am going to state a little lemma and then let you deduce the uniqueness from that lemma. Okay. So, this is a general lemma really about homomorphism between two groups. So, suppose I have two groups G and H. Okay. So, let G and H be groups and suppose so well I do not really have anything between them yet let G H be groups and suppose I have a generating set for G. Okay. So, and uh, let A subset of G generate G. So, again recall that means that the subgroup generated by A is going to be the entire group G. Okay. Now, let Suppose I have two homomorphisms. So, let f1 and f2 be homomorphisms, homes from G to H. Then, if f1 and f2 agree on A, if f1 of A equals f2 of A for all A in A, then they agree on all of G, then F1 of G is equal to F2 of G for all G in G. Okay. So, if I have two homomorphisms which agree on a generating set, then they must agree on the whole group. Okay. So, that is a little lemma. So, the proof of the lemma is also an exercise, again a very easy exercise. Now, what I want you to try and do is to see how this lemma can be used to show a uniqueness of uh, the map f tilde that we have. Okay? And the, the little hint is, so use this lemma to prove uniqueness in the, in the main proposition in the universal property proposition. Okay, and the hint here recall is well, the hint is the following recall that the range of the map J. So, that is the important thing here. This guy generates the free group. This is what we proved first. So, here is a generating set and if two homomorphisms agree on a generating set, then they must agree everywhere. Okay? So, show that for uniqueness, uh, what you will have to try and show is that if I have two homomorphisms f1 tilde f2 tilde, uh, both of which uh, make the diagram commute, then those two homomorphisms agree on the range of j okay? and hence by this lemma, they agree everywhere. Okay? Okay, so, we will talk about applications of this, this universal property next time.